In the first video in this series, we looked at how businesses recover the cost of their long-lived assets by depreciating them over time. If you haven't seen that video, you might want to check it out right now before you watch this one. But over the last several years, Congress has tried to encourage business investment by allowing businesses to claim as an expense the entire cost of assets in the years they purchased them, giving them an immediate tax break for doing so. In this video, we're going to look at two of those tax breaks and see how they work. I'm the Tax Geek, and here are Special Depreciation and the De Minimis Election Oversimplified. <music> At this point, you might be asking, but Tax Geek, didn't you say this in a recent video? So, if you purchased an asset for your business with a useful life of five years and deducted the cost of it from your income as an expense in the year it was purchased, your business's net income would be substantially understated in the year you purchased the asset and significantly overstated in the other four years. This is not a realistic depiction of net income. Yes, I did, but I also stated that the depreciation methods used by accountants for preparing financial statements don't need to match the methods used for tax purposes. That's because most businesses want to show the highest net income they can to their owners and potential financial backers and the lowest possible net income to the IRS. Taking special depreciation and the de minimis election allows them to do just that. So let's take a look at these two programs and see how they work. Special depreciation, also known as bonus depreciation, has been in the tax code in one form or another for most of the 21st century. Its current form can be traced back to our old friend, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which largely took effect in 2018. On the surface, special depreciation is very simple. You can deduct 100% of the cost of most long-lived assets as an expense in the year they are purchased. You don't have to worry about recovery periods or depreciation tables. If the deduction for special depreciation plus your other business expenses exceed your income, the resulting loss can be used to offset other income or carried forward to a future year. The property can be purchased new or used, but the property must be new to you. For example, if you lease an asset and acquire it at the end of the lease, any purchase price does not qualify for special depreciation. If you inherited the asset or received it as a gift, you also cannot claim special depreciation. In addition, special depreciation cannot be taken on real property, and it also cannot be taken on any property used in rental service, such as appliances or other improvements. Currently, special depreciation is considered to be the default form of depreciation for eligible assets. If you wish to use standard maker's depreciation instead, you must attach a statement to your tax return opting out of special depreciation. Special depreciation is not a permanent part of the tax code, and the special depreciation percentage is expected to reduce by 20% per year starting in 2023 until it totally phases out after 2026. That is, unless Congress decides to extend it, which they've consistently done just before it was due to expire in past years. Let's go back to our friends Alice and Ralph and see what special depreciation would look like for the assets they purchased in 2021 and 2022. Here, on their Form 4562, the total basis of the oven, the mixer, and the display cabinet is shown on line 14 of Part 2 of the form and taken as a depreciation expense on line 16 of their Form 1065. It's that simple. No additional depreciation is taken on these items in future years. Alice and Ralph get an immediate tax benefit in the form of lower taxable net income for 2021 and 2022 when they purchase the refrigerator but their taxable business income would be higher for the subsequent years when they wouldn't get the benefit of the depreciation they previously took. Since Alice and Ralph are still taking depreciation on these items, albeit all in one year, the assets they purchased are still tracked on a depreciation schedule because the original purchase price may be needed to calculate a qualified business income deduction or a gain if the assets are sold or disposed of. Here is what Alice and Ralph's 2022 depreciation schedule looks like this time using special depreciation. Alice and Ralph can also deduct the entire cost of certain smaller assets using the de minimis election. This is an IRS regulation that allows businesses to deduct the entire cost of any asset up to $2,500 per item. This not only lowers taxable net income, but can also alleviate a great deal of record keeping. Let's say that the mixer they purchased in 2021 instead had a cost of $2,350. 
To take this amount as an expense, Alice and Ralph attached to their 1065 return a statement making the election. The cost of the mixer does not show up on their Form 4562 or as a depreciation expense on their Form 1065. Instead, Alice and Ralph list the cost of the mixer in the Other Expense section of their tax return. As an added bonus, Alice and Ralph don't need to list the mixer on their depreciation schedule, further simplifying record keeping. Taking special depreciation or opting out of it can be an important tax planning tool. When purchasing large assets, it's wise to calculate both the special depreciation and regular maker's depreciation and choose the one that best fits with your current and potential future business and financial goals. In the next video in the series, we'll be looking at another way to deduct the cost of long-lived assets in the year you acquire them, the Section 179 deduction. As always, additional information and resources can be found in the video description. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone who would find it useful. Subscribing to this channel and tapping the bell puts you first in line to see new video releases. Of course, your questions, comments, and suggestions are always welcome in the comment space below. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with more of your taxes oversimplified.